This video shows how to configure the most recent 1.7 nightly builds of PCSX2 so Gran Turismo 4 LAN games can be played. Apparently the developers made some changes to network emulation recently. And when I tried searching for documentation, everything was based on the old network code base. So I wanted to document my findings. The old method required installing WinPCAP and configuring a particular Ethernet plugin. The new way uses the TAP Windows network driver used by a lot of VPN software and is quite powerful. But it's not immediately obvious that you can configure the emulator this way. To demonstrate this and show what kind of complex retro gaming setups you can do with modern computers, I will run a Gran Turismo 4 LAN game with two PCSX2 instances running on the same machine. Uh, when you first install PCSX2 and enable the network adapter, it defaults to the sockets dev device type. Under the covers, this acts like a NAT similar to what your router does when you access the internet. But what that means is that the emulated PS2 is running in its own isolated LAN. So normal online games that connect to an external server work perfectly fine, but games that require the systems be on the same LAN like Gran Turismo 4 don't. This is where the tap driver comes in. A tap driver is just like any regular Ethernet driver, except instead of sending and receiving data using cables, it uses software. In this case, the PCSX2 emulator. Once you have everything set up correctly, you can think of the TAP devices as being connected to PCSX2 with a piece of virtual Ethernet cable. This allows you to configure rather elaborate network configurations, including bridging multiple interfaces so that you can run multiple instances of PCSX2 all connected to the same virtual LAN. Though the normal use case of this capability is playing LAN games over a VPN. But I'm going to show you that you don't need to do it this way. To get started, we need a few things. First, we need a copy of PCSX2. I'm using the most recent nightly build as of this filming. We also need a copy of the OpenVPN installer, which you can get here. I'm just going to install the tap driver because I'm not using a VPN, but if you are, then go ahead and install that. So go in here. I'm not using that. Tap Windows 6 is the only thing that you need. By default, it creates a, uh, a tap device, but we need another one, so I'm going to create it. And I'm going to re rename them so that it's easier to keep track of everything. Next, we need to bridge these TAP interfaces together with the Ethernet card. What this does is connect all of these Ethernet devices into a virtual Ethernet switch. Only do this if you're planning to play with systems on your same LAN. Don't do this if you're using a VPN. Also, when you do this, you will lose your network access. And to get it back, you'll need to configure the IP settings on the bridge. So do this. So before you do this, uh, write down your computer's IP address and other settings. So go in here and save all of that. Take a picture. And you'll sometimes get this error. And so you go in here and just make sure that this is all selected there. And then you go into here and this is where you enter the IP address settings. Okay. 
and you can test that that worked. Just re refresh here, and there you go. This next part was a bit fragile and things seemed to work better once I rebooted after setting this all up. So I'm going to do that now. Now, once you've done all this and opened up PCSX2's network settings, you see this new option, tap. Select that and select the tap interface you created earlier. Now, we ha now all we have to do is set up the PS2 network settings. I did this earlier, but we'll show the settings. I'll show them on both instances. It's all the same. For the other instance, we select the other tap interface. IP address needs to be valid for your LAN. The DNS server is a third party DNS server that allows the PS2 to get past the DNS check. Um, then on this other PS2, it's all the same, except the IP address is different. Now we fire up Gran Turismo 4. And if you're watching this, I assume you're familiar with Gran Turismo 4 LAN settings. It's complicated. I'm not going to go into it. Um, I set this up earlier. So on this system, on this one, we're not the host. On this system, I believe we are the host. Yes. And then I'm just going to enable progressive mode on both of them because that always resets whenever you power cycle. And on this one, I since it's just me and I don't have a second person to play, I'm just going to have the uh, second system set up as a um, just as the view mode which I guess was used for casting live events. Yeah. And this was the host, so we're gonna get that going first. And I'm doing this on a keyboard, so I'm not even don't I'm not even going to attempt to play competently. I'm just going to show that it's I'm just going to show that it does in fact run.
And two instances running on the same machine. If I had a second monitor, two controllers, this would actually be playable. Back in the day, this would have required two PS2s, two copies of the game, a network switch. I remember trying this back when the, the game was popular and it was a bit of a pain getting everything set up and now it's I mean it's still a pain getting everything set up but you at least don't have to deal with two PS2s and two copies of the game so I think this proves the point and this computer isn't very high end it's a uh, seven-year-old computer, seven-year-old GPU. Imagine what you could do with a uh, with a modern computer. 